Hey guys, how's it going? Hope you're all alright. So in this video, we're going to learn how to construct a network diagram, which is then used to uh, perform our critical path analysis. And this process has four steps in it. And as you can see, they're all lined up here. And the first step in this process of uh, critical path analysis is to identify what is the company trying to do. So the project at hand and its objective, which will it ov obviously include the dead deadline with it. So uh, replacing an old machine in three weeks, that's something that you could see in your exam as being the objective of a project. Then the second step is to identify what are the tasks or what are the activities that are involved in in completing this project so in order to replace the old machine you will need to order a new one get the old one out and of course you're going to have to train your workers on the new machine so those are the steps that you identify as being part of that project but if you notice that these three are not in their logical order I mean you cannot install a new machine before removing an old one so the third step is making sure that then all the tasks that you've identified are in their correct logical sequence which means that first you will need to remove the old machine, then install the new machine, and only then can you bring your workers in for training. So that's the third step. And usually in most of your exams, if not all, the first three steps are done and you are given the activities that are at hand and the, the duration it will take to complete each. And you're usually asked to perform some part or all of the step number four, which is to identify the critical path which is the shortest time it will take you to finish the project of replacing the old machine by using a network diagram so this network diagram that we'll see will have two shapes in it and this is a uh, key to the whole uh, concept now the first shape that we will see throughout our diagrams is called a node okay and it looks like this it's a circle in three parts the left side a full semicircle the right side divided into two halves why we do this, we'll get to it very soon. Now, why is this shape or why is the node needed in this diagram? Well, whenever you use a node, you're trying to show two things. One is that an activity is starting from that point. And very soon this will make sense. So just remember this, that whenever you're starting an activity such as installing a new machine, that's where you will make a node to indicate that this is where you are starting that activity. Or this node is also used whenever an activity is ending. So whenever you finish the task of installing new machines, you will also make a node. The second shape that you will see is a straight line, which is what we use to show the activity that we're talking about. Okay, so these two you will see that could collectively will make our network diagram. So this table is what the combination of step one, two, and three would look like. We have the activity or the task here, the project at hand is planning and producing new designs. That was step one. Step two was identifying all the things that you'll have to do to finish this project, which was new designs, researched and prepared, uh, approval by directors, obtaining materials. So all of these things, these six activities will be required to finish this project. And step three was to put them in their correct logical sequence. So activity A, which is the first activity, is new designs researched and prepared. Now first you do the research and then you send it for approval by the director. So this is in the correct logical sequence. Once the approval has been received, only then can you decide how much material and labor you'll need and the cost of that. Then you prepare for your drawings and the production employees to start uh, coming up with the new uh, production processes then you obtain the new materials for the new designs once all the costing and the preparation and the designing uh, designing process has been completed and once you've gotten all the materials then you go to produce the samples for the new design so if we read through this this makes sense and and that's where CPA the first advantage of CPA using this technique is that it makes it clear what are the things that you have to do and in exactly what sequence sequence you'll have to do and we'll use this information when you, uh, when we have to write an essay answer on this topic. Now, this table that you see is you will be always given in this detail. These four parts will always be provided to you. And what we see here, are first of all, the activity column, which we can see this A, F, A, B, all the way to F. So there are six activities in this project. Each activity has also been defined there, as we've just seen. Additionally, you'll always be given the duration. It might be in weeks, it might be in days, but they will all be 
the same uh, unit. So we can see here, for example, that doing the research and preparation for designs will take this uh, project 12 weeks, first activity, then the second one, B will take one, four, two, five, and two, the last one. The most important part of this table is this sequence. Sequence may also appear as preceding activities in some uh, papers, so do not get confused there. Now, what this tells you is that what are the activities that need to be finished before you can start this activity? Now, notice here, for activity A, there's a blank. If it's a blank, that means nothing needs to be done before A, which will make A the very first activity of our project. Okay. Now, remember, when we saw when we were discussing the node, we said that whenever you start an activity, you show that by making a node. And that's what we're going to do here. We'll make a node right at the start of our diagram. And whenever you make a node, number it right away. Since this is our first node, we will call it number one. Okay? Now, the first step that we're taking in this project is to start activity A. And you'll remember that in order to make, in order to show that you're starting an activity, you need to make a straight line. So I'll make a straight line just like that. That should do it. I'll, let's see if I can make it a little bit more visible. There we go. So a straight line just like that. And remember that the length of it does not matter. Just make sure that it's a nice straight line. And whenever you make the straight line, always mention the activity above it and the duration below it. So the activity was A, the duration was 12. So what I'm going to do here is that I'm going to write A above it and 12 below it. So now what this tells me is that without even looking at the table, if I just saw this part here, I know that the first thing that I've done in this activity, in this project, is start with activity A, which will take 12 weeks. That's just simply by looking at this part here. Okay. Now, little tip here is that whenever you're done with each activity, make sure you just check it off from the table. So that you know you're done with this one. There isn't any confusion. Then after A, of course, comes activity B. And here, which is initial approval by directors, it will take one week. But they're telling you that it must follow A. So the thing to remember here is that whenever you see an activity appear in the sequence column, that means that this activity, which is activity A right now, we need to finish activity A so that we can begin with activity B. And once again, remember that in order to end an activity, we make a node. So once again, I'm going to bring up a node right here to show that this is our... There we go. So just bring a node here and connect it at the end of activity A, showing that at this point, we have finished activity A. Since this is our second node in the sequence, I'm going to write number two on the left side of our node. Now, this is the biggest mistake that students make, what I'm going to tell you next. Make sure that you remember this part, that whenever you end an activity and you make a node, and of course, whenever activity A ends, we have to start activity B, use the same node to start activity B, which means that I'm simply going to make a straight line from node two and pull it up here just like that. I'm gonna call this B, which should take one week. Okay, notice I did not make a separate node to start B. All I've done is I've used the same node to indicate that as soon as A ends, we started with B, which will take one week. All right. Once again, we'll check off B from our list and we'll go to C. Now, this should start become easier for you. C, which is cost of materials and labor, which will take four weeks, must follow B's. Once again, as soon as this appears, activity B, it appears in the sequence column, we need to end this activity. So. I'm going to pull up another node right at the end of activity B, just so. Call it node 3. And you'll remember, all you got to do is stretch a straight line just like that. And I'm going to call this C, which will take me four weeks. Okay? 
please remember that the length of these lines have no significance but just make sure that each node is after the last one so don't make node 3 over here or over here or above it even make sure it is after it okay so I'm done with C now comes D D which is preparation for detailed drawings will two weeks must follow B now this is the whole point of the CPA diagram is that if we can do certain things together we should do that and we can clearly see here that as soon as B ended, we could start with C. And the instructions are that as soon as B ends, you should also start with D. So from node 3, which is where we started C, the instructions are saying we should start D from here as well. So what you do at this point is either from above node 3 or below the node 3, whatever you prefer. I'm going to go above like that. And just like that, I'm going to stretch out a line which indicates that this is activity D, which will take two weeks, and I check it off. All right? So the clue here is that if you see the same activity in multiple sequence column, that means there are multiple activities starting from that node. So since node 3 was where we started with C, we could also start with D from node 3. Okay? Let's move on. Now activity E, which requires five weeks, must follow C. So we need to end C here. And I hope you've guessed it by now. We need to end activity C by making a node. So I bring another node here. And don't worry about D above us. Let it be for now. There aren't any instructions yet to end D. So this is my uh, node four. And node 4 requires me to end C and start with activity E. So I'm going to make a line just like that. Once again, label it correctly E and 5 weeks. Now we get to our last one, which is activity F, producing samples, takes 2 weeks, must follow D and E. Okay? Now, do not be alarmed. Just follow what you know. Follow your instinct. Whatever we've done so far, follow the process. In order to start F, we need to finish D and E both. So whenever there are multiple activities, just identify where they are. You can see D is there and E is here. Make a node. I'll show you how. Make a node right in between the two. So I'm going to take a node here. I'm going to make it like that. And... One thing I'm going to do is I'm going to connect E here. Oops, I'm going to make proper line here. So E gets connected here, which indicates that E has ended here. And all I got to do is take activity D and stretch it out all the way here. Okay, that's it. Because now what my instructions were saying is that whenever you end E and D, which is what we've done here, you can then start with activity F. And once again, my simple action of writing the activity on top, uh, the duration of two below it, check activity off, and this was my fifth node. Okay, I'll repeat it once again. If there are multiple node, multiple activities in the sequence mark, that means you need to end two activities on the same node. Those two activities are D and E. So we, although D had started at node three, we only need to end it now before F begins. So we did that, we finished E, and we began with F. Okay, now there is one last final step. And that step is that we have to end F at some point as well. And remember, in order to end an activity, we make a node. So the last action in this project is to announce that we are done, F is finished, and the sixth and the last step is to announce the completion of this project, which would be then producing samples of the new design being complete. All right, so step by step, and it's literally, you could see that it, it gets quite repetitive, so you can, you can get it right, but the only things that you have to remember is that whenever you're ending an activity and starting one, use the same node. The length of the lines do not matter. As long as you're making the nodes after the last one, you will be fine.